welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video and for being here today leo says hello hello oh <laughs> big yawn so today's video was actually kind of a complimentary maybe an extension on a past video i've done a video i did quite a few months ago so the video was called five things i stopped doing to finally lose weight uh you guys really liked that video i had a lot of really wonderful comments um a lot of great feedback so i figured i'd do a similar video but instead of doing the five things i stopped doing i'm gonna do the five things i started doing so i know i have a lot of weight loss content on this channel um as you guys know if you don't know my whole channel is dedicated to weight loss, so definitely check it out if you're more curious about the specifics of my weight loss. But when I was approaching this video, I really didn't want it to just be the same information over and over again. Because obviously when we think of what we should start doing to lose weight, you think of like tracking your macros, tracking your calories, exercising. Those things to me and I definitely to my audience are obvious at that point just because I've talked about it so much. So I am excited for this video because I did manage to think of five things that aren't really thrown around when people are talking about this topic. All right, so one of the things I started to do to finally lose weight, like I said, on top of obviously tracking my calories, exercising, one of the things I started doing was I actually started observing my friends. So for me personally, when it came to approaching weight loss, a lot of you guys know I was overweight my entire life. I never had a good relationship with food. I never really learned what was a healthy amount of food to eat. And because of that, I just lived my entire life overweight um, into adulthood when I reached obesity, obviously. So since I personally didn't have any experience Experience in healthy living in healthy eating I decided to just look around me and try to observe and mirror a lot of the habits and patterns that my friends exhibited so for example like it's obvious like it's at least it's for me it is obvious who in my friend group has a healthy relationship with food or who in my friend group doesn't struggle with food addiction binge eating any other type of disordered eating or anything like that so for me I kind of use it as a learning experience I thought to myself Here's my friend, here's my friend who lives a life that I wanna replicate, and here's a friend to whom me doesn't seem like they're not eating good food, you know? But yeah, like I had friends who I looked at them and I was really inspired by them. Like I wanted to live a life like them, so I just started observing their food patterns. You know, my friends and I used to go to bottomless pasta a lot before I started losing weight, and you know, I started picking up on patterns maybe I was eating one to two more bowls at the bottomless pasta. Maybe I was eating three to four more loaves of bread. But just by observing that, it made me think deeper because I knew, yes, I just ate 2000 calories for dinner, but I still knew I was gonna go home and eat more. But then I could look at my friends and see they are so full and no, they are not eating. Like it is not normal for me to still eat after eating that much food. So I really looked to people in my life who were healthy and just tried to replicate what they were doing. All right, so the second thing I started doing to finally lose weight, and that is that I started making excuses to be active. So what I mean by this, obviously when we're talking about exercise, I feel like there are different ways to look at it. You can look at a workout as like an isolated workout. You went to the gym solely to work out, like that was the purpose. And then there are other type of workouts. So I was exposed to this first when I heard the term active rest day. So when I was losing weight, um, a lot of people would be like, it's an active rest day. And what they meant was they weren't going to the gym, you know, they weren't going to lift weights, they weren't gonna do anything intensive, but they were still gonna be active. So when I was exposed to the concept of an active rest day, um, I really, you know, I went with it. I thought, that's a good idea, I'm going with it. And just so we're clear, just to reiterate, I'm not talking about my regular workouts here, like those were completely different. But even when I wasn't working out, if I could have the opportunity to be active, I would. So when I was losing weight, I was doing a lot of things. I was a master's student, like I said, I was a TA, I was writing my master's thesis, um, and I was doing a lot of things that required a lot of mental power, right? A lot of writing, a lot of reading, all of that fun stuff that doesn't usually correlate with like being physically active. So what I did is when I had work to do, which was essentially every day, I would do it, but I would not do it from home. So every morning I would wake up, I would pack up, I would go on my 30 minute walk to like Starbucks, I would get my coffee, my tea, whatever I was drinking, I would sit down, I would work the whole day, and then I would walk back. And while it doesn't seem like a lot, it was a lot, right? Because it was adding an extra hour of activity to my day that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And I mean, not only that, but just to think of all the benefits it was adding to like my work life balance, uh, my mental health while doing work, like I'm sure walking before sitting down for eight hours to read was good for my mental health. Just like walking home would have been good for it. And just to reiterate guys, like this was not intensive stuff. This was solely walking and it wasn't even walking fast because when I was on my way to Starbucks, like I didn't want to arrive super sweaty and gross, right? So I took my time. It was leisurely walking. I put a podcast in, I put music in and I just went for a walk. And once you get into the habit of that, at least for me, when I got into the habit of walking, it's a hard habit to break. Like once you like walking, you like walking, you know, like you want to walk everywhere. So I really do think that integrating more activity into my daily life just overall 
gave me a healthier lifestyle. You know, I still walk places to do work. If I have a video to edit, I will walk to a Starbucks 45 minutes away. Like I will. All right, so the third thing I started doing to finally lose weight, and this was a really big one for me, and that was writing down my goals. So when I say write down your goals, I'm not, like I know it sounds kind of like flu flu, right? It's like write it down, manifest the life of your dreams. Like a lot of it sounds kind of just like idealistic, but guys, there is a lot of research, and I mean a lot of research, suggesting that writing things down makes it easier to accomplish. You know, there's a lot of research that says if you write it down, you're more likely to go through with it. And I truly think that worked for me. So I mentioned this a few times on my channel. Like there were a lot of reasons why I wanted to lose weight, but what I did is I wrote them down. Like I wrote goal lists every single month. So if you go back on my Instagram, like I have so many posts of me just writing my goals. Like it's literally just a picture. I'll, I'll put it on the screen. It's just a picture like on Instagram that I put text over to write my goals. And I did that every single month. And, and I feel like it gave me smaller milestones to accomplish because obviously I had a very big goal, right? And that was to lose 130 to 140 pounds. And when I looked at that at the beginning, it was very overwhelming. That is a very big number. And that is a lot of weight to lose. And I knew that like I had goals to reach like the 250s or like the 240s, or it was only like 10 pound goals for the month or five pound goals for the month or maybe a goal was trying something new at the gym or maybe a goal was trying a completely you know different workout routine and i think something that was really important at least for me was i wrote my goals down at the very beginning before i even started and since i wrote them down they were always in the back of my head so anytime i wanted to give up like it just wasn't gonna happen because those goals were so ingrained in my mind some of my first videos like ever go over some of the goals that i had um, at the beginning and some of the reasons why I wanted to lose weight, but just off the top of my head, like one of them that was so this goal alone or this fear, like I had a fear, this fear alone, I think really contributed to me losing weight. I was horrified, like absolutely horrified. Cause I was 22 when I started losing weight. I knew we were coming up to the period. Okay. I knew we were coming up to the period where all my friends were going to get married. Everyone was going to start, you know, doing shit. And all I could think about instead of being happy for my friends, instead of being happy for me to be included in those things was if I would fit in a bridesmaid's dress. I was so horrified at the possibility of one of my friends choosing their dream bridesmaid's dress and them not being able to get it for their wedding because I couldn't fit in it. I could not deal with that. So I told myself I had no choice but to lose weight. And I know that example is more shallow, more on the shallow side. It's more of like, you know, vanity looking a certain way, being able to fit in something, whatever. Um, but I wrote all my goals down, all of them, including ones that said, I don't want to die at a young age. I don't want to, you know, need my knees replaced when I'm 40. So write down your goals. You don't have to publish them. You don't have to show anyone. I did on my Instagram, but you know, when I, when I started my Instagram, it was not what it was it, or it was not what it is today. It was, literally 50 people following me so i didn't and 50 people i didn't know following me so like i didn't have a lot of shame posting it but um if you do you don't have to post it keep it in your phone set up reminders i do that all the time i oh that was another thing i used to do i should mention that is every like monday or something i would have a reminder a weekly reminder that said read goals because i wasn't gonna let myself forget about those goals i really would not let myself forget about those things i was like this is your reason and you are holding on to it all right all right so the fourth thing the fourth thing that i started doing to finally lose weight is i started to consume more weight loss and healthy living fitness content my advice is to start your day with weight loss content uh positive weight loss content obviously don't watch anything that's gonna trigger you or uh, make you feel bad about your body. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is uplifting content that inspires you. So that does not have to be a video like this. So right now I'm just sitting down and telling you my experiences. Uh, it does not have to be this type of video. When I first decided to lose weight, I would wake up every single morning and watch weight loss content while I did my makeup. Like it was my routine. I would be doing my makeup and I would just have a video on on the side. 99% of the time it was John's videos. So if you know John, obese to beast on YouTube, which is just crazy to me because if you know him, you know, we're friends and like he's a big reason why I even lost weight. So who knows? Maybe you'll be my friend one day, whoever's watching this. Yeah. But yeah, like it doesn't have to be educational, informative videos like this one. I understand a video like this always isn't super exciting. Um, but like, I just enjoyed watching people living the life I wanted to replicate. So healthy living vlogs, you know, workout vlogs, just errand vlogs. Like I love watching healthy people run errands. It's like they wake up, they're like, yeah, I woke up. I did my 40 minutes of yoga and now I'm drinking a smoothie. And I'm like, bitch, what? I want to live like that. Like those are the people I needed to be watching 
to change my lifestyle. All right guys, so the fifth thing I started doing to finally lose weight is I started saying yes. So what I mean by saying yes instead of no. So leading up to my weight loss, I genuinely feel like I had a lot of opportunities to lose weight and I just never took them. Um, a lot of you guys know that I didn't try to lose weight until I did lose weight. So the time I lost weight was my first real try. Up until that point, I was just comfortable. Like I was just comfortable. I don't really know how to explain it. Like I had just accepted that I was bigger. Um, I was comfortable with who I was. I just always had the thought in the back of my mind, like the concern for my health, right? But other than that, like I was very comfortable with like who I was, my size and everything like that before weight loss. But the one thing that made me so uncomfortable was talking about anything to do with health, fitness, weight loss, food, anything with anyone. So some examples of this that I can think of is like, just like when I was in school, when I was in university and my friend was going to the gym and she would be like, hey, do you wanna come with me? Just an innocent question, do you wanna come with me? The answer was always, always, always no. This happened several times throughout my university career. Uh, in my undergrad, I lived with my roommates who always went to the gym together. All three of them always went to the gym together and I just never went. And they would ask me all the time and I just would not do it. Like I, it made me so uncomfortable to be in that environment with people. I don't know what it was. I just would not do it. And when I look back and I reflect on that, it makes me kind of sad, honestly, because I wonder what would have happened if I just said yes. If you're struggling with weight loss, it's time to learn to say yes. If your friend asks you to go on a walk with her, yes. If your friend asks you to go on a hike, yes. If your friend asks you to go to the mall, the answer is yes. Because like we talked about earlier, that is an active rest day. Like just start saying yes. All the things I told myself I couldn't do, all the things I told myself I didn't want, all I had to do was say yes. All I had to do was say yes to a gym membership. I said, should I buy a gym membership? Yeah. And this goes past weight loss, right? Like this I think is just good life advice in general is just say yes to more opportunities because the more you say yes, the more open-minded you are, the easier things become, the more experiences you get to, you know, learn about, you get to ask questions. You get to leverage all these things that you wouldn't be able to if you had said no. Just start saying yes to things that you know deep down are better for you. But guys, that is it for this video. So those are the five things I started doing to finally lose weight. As always, please leave your experiences down below. We have a great community here. I love the comments, okay? I love going into the comments and seeing that someone's commented something and that freaking 15 people have replied. You know, that is my shit. Community is my shit. Thank you guys so much for watching this video to the end Please remember to like comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye